in this video, we're talking about severe weather in the Northeast. The Storm Prediction Center has put out a slight risk of severe weather today and a rare day four 15% risk as things look to get really active. Speaking of really active, all eyes are on the tropics as storms are literally exploding all over the place. Welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Guys, there are literally more storms forming out there today than I even have time to talk about on this video. So I'm gonna do my best to get right into it and be quick and to the point on each of these threats. But real quick, before we get started, please share this with a family member or friend, preferably on social media so we can get this vital information in front of as many people as possible. If you don't have social media, just hit that like button right here on YouTube and it will suggest the video to the right people for you. While you're down there doing that, subscribe to this channel and turn notifications on because I think information and updates on these storms are gonna be flowing pretty consistently here over the next little bit. Okay, without further ado, let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And there's two main features here that I want you to look at, okay? If we zoom in here on the northern part of the United States, you can see that we've got zonal flow up here, almost directly west to east, uh, which is really important. Keep that in mind as we go forward in the video. And if we go down here to the Bay of Campeche, you can see our big storm forming down here. Still no definite area of circulation, still very unorganized, but we do expect this to turn into a tropical storm at some point and just dump a ton of rain up here in Texas and Louisiana. And of course, we're gonna talk about this in depth right here in a minute. But first, I wanna talk about that severe weather threat. All right, we're looking at the HRRR model here on the composite reflectivity. This is what the radar could look like as we go later on into the day. Okay, if you wanna keep up with the date and time, it's always gonna be listed up there above my head. Guys, there's a slight risk of severe weather out here today. The biggest threat's gonna be damaging winds, but there is also a marginal tornado threat as well. So anytime there is more than a 0% chance of a tornado, you know I'm gonna talk about it. Especially up here in the Northeast, as you guys have, you know, just been having a hard time with severe weather this year. Today's threat is gonna move in during the evening hours, okay? Here we are at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're gonna have a complex of storms moving from west to east. Once again, that zonal flow is gonna be bringing all these storms in very quickly. Right around nighttime tonight, we're gonna have an area of severe weather uh, move into western New York, near Buffalo there, and look at this. You see that? That's a backward C. That indicates to me that this may end up being a damaging wind event, a very significant one, okay? Uh, anytime you see those Boeing echoes there on the uh, radar or the simulated radar or whatever, uh, that means that there's probably some very strong winds in there, okay? We could be talking about wind gusts in excess of 60 or 70 miles an hour today. Uh, so make sure you have some way of getting weather warnings tonight. You'll probably want to be asleep tonight around 11, 12 p.m. or a.m. as this uh, gets closer to Albany, New York there. So just in case things really start to go bad, make sure, you, once again, you have some way uh, of getting that weather warning and it's going to wake you up. You can turn on alerts on your phone or you can get a NOAA weather radio. You can probably still head to Target right now and get one. By the way, if you guys don't have one of those, I've got a link down in the description description. Extremely, highly, highly recommend one of those. These storms are going to start weakening very quickly as we get into the 2 a.m. time frame tonight, uh, as they're just going to bring some rumbling thunder and maybe some heavy rain into Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and southern portions of Maine, okay? And they're going to get the heck out of here right after that. But it doesn't stop there, son. Let's look at tomorrow over here in the Ohio Valley. Once again, I'm going to put this into motion and just look at the very quick moving uh, parts of these storm systems directly west to east uh, associated with that zonal flow, okay? We've got this area this river for storms to flow through that separate an area of colder air and an area of warmer air. And like I always talk about where those things meet, uh, you're going to get thunderstorms. And that's kind of what we're seeing here uh, through the uh, through the Midwest into the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes region, and then also into the Northeast. Here we are tonight into tomorrow as some scattered thunderstorms can be possible through Wisconsin uh, into Michigan. But the next real severe weather threat is going to come through here on Tuesday. We've got an actual low pressure system forming here in uh, Minnesota. that's going to trail down a little bit of a cold front that's going to try to puncture that warm air even more. And we're going to see some storms form there in Wisconsin, all the way down into Iowa, into the upper peninsula of Michigan. As this thing rapidly uh, deteriorates as it gets into the early morning hours on Tuesday and just kind of falls apart there before it gets into Canada. But here's the thing, okay? Here we are at 2 p.m. on Tuesday. We've still got a strong storm here and we've got this big uh, trailing cold front coming down behind it. And if we look at this storm from the upper air point of view, you can see exactly what's happening here. Uh, low pressure system right here. It's got a little bit of a trough with it, a little bit of a short wave that's kicking up those 850 millibar low level jet stream winds on the southeastern quadrant. That's going to lead to some thunderstorms on this side, okay? And possibly even some rotating thunderstorms, especially if we can get some more oomph there during the heating of the day on a Tuesday and Wednesday. And let's track this thing all the way out. By the way, Tuesday evening looks to me like most of the threat's going to be there in Ontario, north of the United States, okay? This is going to be probably a pretty big severe weather day in Canada, but definitely watch out for some spinning 
wind storms there in north of New York there in, in this portion of Canada as this little short wave is really going to try to you know produce some rotational thunderstorms there as it moves east now once this gets into uh, the United States on Wednesday this is why we have that uh, increased risk of severe weather on the day four outlook uh, we're going to have this trough moving through we're going to have the ability for some rotating thunderstorms but I think the biggest th thing here is going to be this cold front that tails behind it okay we're going to have a big area of likely severe thunderstorms with damaging winds and then isolated pockets of rotational thunderstorms uh, that do have the uh, possibility of producing tornadoes so once again right now it looks like the biggest threats are going to be today and then especially Wednesday in the northeast so just make sure you're weather aware and you're prepared for that i'll have more updates on this as we go into the future but for now it's time to start talking about the tropics all right here's the latest outlook from the national hurricane center man and whew, this is as active as i've ever seen it look since last year and last year was the most active year we've ever had so there's a lot of stuff to talk about out here uh, but i only have time to talk about some of it we're going to talk about the three most important things according to me uh, we're going to label these storms number one two and three okay and i'm going to talk about each of those in depth here starting with storm number one in the gulf of mexico let's go there now here is a look at invest 94l uh, we're going to call it storm number one here just for simplicity's sake and if you've been watching these videos for the past week or so you're all too familiar with this image a big plume of moisture is working into uh, the western half of the gulf of mexico and it's going to quickly form into a tropical storm at some point i think later today we're going to have a tropical depression and then maybe tomorrow even we will have a tropical storm out of this thing uh, if this actually gets as organized as what the euro is suggesting here and as quickly as what it's suggesting okay you can see a clear area of rotation there with those really high p watt values right in the middle uh, suggesting that we have tremendous amounts of moisture in the air there that's just going to cause a bad bad problem uh, with rainfall in the southeastern texas region you can see that it really starts spinning up there but once it gets closer to land the spin becomes less of a problem and the rainfall becomes more of a problem now, i want you to look at this this is what the precipitable water values is what we're looking at here uh, and it's off the charts literally you see that bright blue there that's you know we're getting close to a value of four there or 4.36 which is literally I, I don't think i've ever seen that before and what this is describing to us is the amount of water that's available in the atmosphere uh, to be converted into rainfall uh, so if you're looking at a radar image and you know you see a thunderstorm it's got the reds and the yellows and stuff the intensity of the rainfall in that storm isn't the same across the board it depends on the precipitable water values in your area as to how hard it actually rains uh given the thickness and the density and the height of the clouds around you. So when you have a precipitable water values this high, flash flooding is almost a guarantee there. And even worse than that is that once this thing starts interacting with land here between Corpus Christi and Houston, it just sticks around. It stays there. It hangs out. It doesn't go anywhere. And, and, and then it just kind of fizzles out. So I've mentioned this a couple times. We very well may end up having a hurricane out of this. It could turn into a big wind threat and a storm surge threat. Uh, but I think that no matter what, our main threat here is going to be the heavy rain and the flash flooding. It's going to, it's probably going to be pretty bad. Now, the thing that's going to take away from the rain threat and add to the hurricane threat is if this storm, rather than hugging the coast like this, uh, takes a little bit more of an eastward track. Okay. So if this was to go a little bit further east into the Gulf of Mexico and then go right into Louisiana there, we would probably have a significant hurricane on our hands. And that's still a possibility right now. Okay. But the vast majority of the models show this thing, uh, going right into Southeast Texas and then kind of stalling out and becoming a rain nightmare out there. So what we were just looking at was one model, but there's a bunch of them out there. Let's put them all together and see what they all are saying. And we get the spaghetti plots here, okay? And as you can see, the models have a pretty good idea as to where uh, this storm is going. The most popular or the most likely path here is gonna take it right in between Corpus Christi and Houston and then kind of stall out a little bit. But there still is a spread, okay? This thing could go further west. And if that happens, that's very good news, okay? It's gonna have less time uh, to pick up moisture and intensify though there will be less rain and less impact from this storm uh, but once again it could go east and if that happens uh, we're gonna have a much stronger storm on our hands possibly another hurricane to talk about so uh, let's let's hope for the best and hope that this thing goes as far west as possible all right back to the tropical weather outlook here and we already talked about storm number one we still have to talk about two and three let's do two now on the weather models okay we're looking at the gfs model here and we're looking at the precipitable water values again but this time we're looking at the p watt anomalies okay this is just going to give you a little bit of a better idea 
uh, to see where that circulation is going to happen and where the model thinks the storm is going to go and how intense it thinks it's going to get. So this storm's pretty far out, okay? We really don't see it approaching the southeastern coast uh, near the Carolinas there until uh, Wednesday. Uh, this is also the same time as that big cold front's coming through, producing our severe weather uh, in the northeast. And that's actually going to play a big factor in determining where this storm goes, okay? So if we push this forward a little bit, you can clearly see the rotation in this storm. It's trying to become a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm, and it's going right for the Carolinas, but it gets kind of hung up in that trough there, and a secondary area of circulation forms and kind of produces this big subtropical storm here in the northeast, possibly bringing a lot of rain and wind to uh, New England once again, which, you know, they had Hurricane Henri not too long ago. They had the uh, remnants of a Hurricane Ida come through. They don't, they don't have, they don't want to have anything to do with any more tropical systems, and I feel you. Uh, but according to this model run, that is exactly what's going to happen uh, right before another cold front comes through and swipes it away. Now, here's the thing. Right now, this doesn't look very uh, concerning. This doesn't look like the worst thing that could happen. But this is a little bit of an uptrend from what we've seen in, in some other runs. So, like I said yesterday, uh, this could end up being a very significant storm. Uh, that impacts the Carolinas or the Northeast, or this could just completely go away right now. It's important that we continue to talk about it though, because after our first storm, this is the next one that potentially could directly impact the United States. So we're gonna watch this closely. As of right now, this isn't anything to be too you know, concerned about, but the National Hurricane Center is watching it, I'm watching it, and you should be watching it too, as we know just how quickly these things can actually wrap up and become big storms. All right, last but not least, we're gonna be talking about this uh, area of interest down here. Okay, this storm is coming off of Africa well below the 15 North line. And anytime a storm comes off of Africa uh, that's uh, pr projected to be this intense at this low of a latitude, usually we end up seeing it coming, you know, right up here where we don't want it to go. So uh, this is, you know, other than this storm over here, I think that this is definitely the most concerning uh, thing that we're seeing right now. But we're going to look and see exactly what we know right now so we can go ahead and prepare for any situation that may unfold. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, back Okay, back to the Euro now, looking at the Atlantic Basin, uh, just in case you can't really see what's going on. This is the US, South America, United Kingdom's up here, Africa's right here, okay? I know it's a little overwhelming if this is the first time you're looking at something like this, but we're looking at the upper level, uh, you know, wind qualities of the upper levels of the atmosphere. Uh, once again, this is the lower level jet stream, and this is also a good way to uh, visually represent where hurricanes are, where they're forming, and how intense they are. As you can see, our storm is coming off of Africa here, and immediately uh, gaining strength, okay? It's full steam ahead towards the west uh, by a Wednesday, September 15th at 8 p.m. There's our uh, big storm in the northeast. There's our tropical storm possibly bringing a significant flooding to Texas. And here is uh, the next thing that we've got to worry about as this really shows rapid intensification out here. Once it gets close to the Caribbean, you can see those tightly packed isobars, those tightly packed lines in the center of the storm uh, indicate to me that we've got really, really intense winds here and, and possibly a major hurricane at this point, okay? So uh, if we keep pushing this forward, it only gets worse. It only gets stronger and more compact as it does continue to head west, northwest, uh, towards uh, towards the Bahamas, just north of the Caribbean islands, and then maybe into the east coast of the United States, okay? Once again, this is just one model. This is going to change a lot, but this is what I've been concerned about for a while now. Okay, this is the uh, this is what a lot of you know the most memorable hurricanes uh, looked like in the beginning when we were forecasting them on the models and stuff. Good news is right now is there's no big feature up here that's going to propel this thing west, so there's still a chance that this could recurve back into the ocean like uh, Larry did. But we need to not make that assumption. Okay, we're still quite a ways out from this storm uh, being close to the United States. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, so we might as well prepare for the worst here. And I would say go ahead and get your hurricane prep uh, plan ready there on the East Coast. Here's a look at the loop of the Piwat uh, anomalies here for this storm. I just wanna let you see uh, the progression of this thing because like I said, this is a very good way to visualize uh, where the storm's going and how uh, you know strong it may be. You can see that well-defined eyewall on the Piwat model here, uh, which is, uh, you know, kind of unsettling to see, to say the least. So uh, this is what we could be expecting as we go into the future. Let's hope for the best. And then it goes out and you recurves up into the ocean for the fish. But if not, I'm going to be right here for you, letting you know all of the latest information on it. Okay. All right. That's all the weather talk I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Once again, please slap that like button, subscribe if you haven't already and turn those notifications on and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Woo!